Chad in North Carolina. Boy, that's a pretty place. Lots of, lots of stuff I like. Mountains and trees and really pretty out there. Okay, I got a nephew that lives out in Murphyville. Yep. So, Paul, I have a set of active speakers with speaker level, high level inputs, as well as line level, low level inputs. Additionally, I have a sub with similar options, speaker level and line level inputs, and a whole mess of wires. I think we may have been misled in the past. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Historically, I would have assumed that the low-level options were always the correct way to go as this option bypasses the external amplifier, mm -hmm. freeing it for other duties. Now, I am understanding that I may want to consider the speaker level inputs as a means of picking up the tonal characteristics of the amplifier and reproducing its sound signature through the sub and the active speakers. Yes, and I've been preaching that for years, as has John Hunter at RHEL. Use the speaker level, high level inputs to your subwoofer because that allows the tonal characteristics of your amplifier to pass through to the sub and you get a more seamless sound. Okay, I'm convinced that when I choose low level inputs, no additional demand is placed on the external amp as it's clearly not connected via the speaker level connections. If we do choose to use the speaker level inputs with a powered speaker, how do we know that the external amp isn't supplying power to an already powered speaker? Because I say it. <laughs> there you go. One of, my, one of my favorite TV shows is Hercule Poirot with uh, David God, uh, uh, Duché, I think it's or Duché. Um, what a wonderful actor. And at some point he goes, it's Hercule Poirot, of course, the greatest detective in the world. I love that guy. He's, I mean, what a great actor. Okay, so it, well, let me assure you that a high level input isn't taking the wattage, the power out of your power amplifier and applying it to the subwoofer. It just isn't doing it. And one of the ways you know that is happening is because your subwoofer, and we're talking about modern subwoofers here, okay, that have built-in amplifiers are using their own power. That's why they have a built-in amplifier. So basically, if you look at the circuit for any of those, you've got a power amplifier built into your subwoofer. And that power amplifier has a low level input, okay? And that's when you plug your RCA ins to that and you get power to the sub. And that's what the amplifier is there for. Then in addition, if you have binding post kind or Neutrik, whatever you have, that is the high level input, all that's happening is we take that, put it through a couple of resistors and shunt off the excess energy and it goes into the low level input. It takes, I mean, like when I built subwoofers, we used to use 100K, 100,000 ohm resistor is what you would be feeding the uh, output of your power amplifier into this amp. Is that drawing any current? Not enough to actually measure, really. <laughs> Imagine the power, your power amplifier of your main system is powering an 8 ohm speaker or a 4 ohm speaker. And when you plug it into the high level inputs of a subwoofer, now you're powering a 100,000 ohm speaker. It's, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. You can prove it. If you plug into the high level inputs and pull the plug on the subwoofer, you ain't gonna get nothing out of it um, because it's not never connected to the woofer itself. Trust me. Okay, thanks for the question.